This is the fifth stage of my painting. I've spent a bit of time analysing it and I need to come into it with some mixed media. Now what I've done is intensified the colour in the water beneath the log as it's across the water. There was too much similarity in colour. So I've increased the ultramarine blue and the viridian green coming through in the water. It, I needed to make this foreground stand out and this is what I'm working on in this stage of the painting is working in the background so that I can then turn around and develop the foreground and create more three dimension in the work. I was actually reasonably happy with the water but um, I needed to do too much with the trees in front. So often if you want to make something come forward you have to work on the stuff that's behind it. In the same way, if you wanted to make something look lighter, you often do it by making other things appear darker. If I'm going to darken this work up, I need to brighten some of my colour so that it doesn't end up being morbid. So I'm going in stronger with the bright viridian green and the cobalt blue because I intend to get some very intense dark rainforest tones into this work because at this stage this could be parkland not a deep rainforest so viridian green here we come and no muting it back with red this time i'm working with my petty Gris pearl mop brush it's a marvelous brush because it carries an enormous amount of wash so when you're doing a large painting it's superb you don't have to keep going back and reloading your brush but it also comes up to a beautiful point so you don't have to change brushes you could do the entire painting with this brush you may need to pay a few hundred dollars for a brush like this but it's well worth it because you invest in the one brush and that brush could last you a lifetime and do everything that you ever needed to, to do dancing around <laughs> trying to put in just natural little bits of foliage coming back into another session this time i've hunted up my gouache this is opaque watercolor tube of chinese white it's well worth a watercolorist having a tube of chinese white unless you're an absolute purist in which case you can use masking fluid to preserve the whites in the paper and then paint over the masking fluid and then rub the masking fluid out afterwards. However, I do a bit of both. And in this case, it's when I make decisions as the painting's progressed and decide I want a lot more light in it, I'll come in with the Chinese white. Now you can also tint the Chinese white up with other colors. In this case, I've tinted it up with a bit of apricot, a bit of orange if you like to create a bit of apricot. And I'm able to go in and suggest a few bits of um, sunlit hair on my girl making my girl a little bit more realistic although I still want to keep her partially out of focus just capturing a few strands of lit sunlit hair I also got a little bit of the um, cadmium red dark in the mixture and using that on the dress and on the bit of the legs just developing those a little bit what I mainly use it is to pick out some catch lights on trees now you cannot enter a watercolor that contains opaque watercolor or gouache in a, an art competition that's for purest watercolor transparent watercolor because you'll remove the transparency but gouache is watercolour, it's just opaque watercolour. Now, pastel is very similar to gouache, except that it's the pure pigment, not in a liquid form. So gouache is sometimes considered to be liquid pastel. It dries with a matte finish in the same way pastel does. So, there isn't a great deal of difference between whether you picked up a 
stick of pastel or if you'd mixed up gouache to do this it's basically the same finished effect on the painting except with the gouache you have the convenience of being able to pick up in this case a very fine brush and do fine lines quite easily again i've suggested that it's very handy for a watercolorist to have a few extra tools on hand some gouache whether they have a full range of colours or, as I'm doing here, just mixing your existing colours with your opaque white. I'm using burnt sienna at the moment, which is compatible with what I've already used in the painting. I've said that you can't suddenly introduce a new colour unless you relate it all around the painting. So I'm looking where else this goes. But burnt sienna basically is a dark muted orange. Now I've already used um, subtle oranges in that I've mixed yellow and red together in this painting to create like a yellow ochre raw umber type of tone. Now that's showing you the brush has a hexagonal handle. I've dipped into Indian ink. I told you I needed to get more of a feeling of rainforest. Well, the best way of making myself get those intense darks of a rainforest was not being achieved by using the watercolours I've got into Indian ink. I want to create some intense darks. Now I'm watering, adding water to some areas of the paper so that when I touch it with Indian ink the edges will soften out a little bit. But some of these ferns in this foreground and foliage in the fern grounds will have such intense darks in behind. They'll be as dark as you can go. Now if I want to get this feeling of semi-jungle, forest is a little less dense than jungle. Jungle is impenetrable and forest is something that you can make your way through. That's basically the difference in the terminology between a jungle and a forest. Marvellous things, these rainforests. They, um, purify the air. We really need them. See how where I use the Indian ink now on the paper that's been wet, it's not as dense. But I'm still getting in lovely and dark and you can see now why I needed to brighten the colour of my green and my blue because we didn't want the painting looking sombre when we came in and put these black tones which are now of course greys they're not luminous greys they're deadpan greys hence the need to offset that with vibrant colour one of my considerations that I'd suggested in the previous um, section of this tutorial was that I could have come in with a splash of red as in putting a few colourful rosellas flying through the sky 